event. And uh, what what we're what we're doing is is looking at best practices around the world uh, in optics. Um, and uh, so and then tomorrow we'll start the uh, lidar sessions with uh, Joe Shaw, and uh, the world expert on lidar, really a great guy. Uh, and uh, anyway, we'll we'll get to that tomorrow. Um, and for those of you um, who would like to have certificates of attendance. Uh, official ones signed by the director of ICDP. That's also possible. We'll we'll have those for those people that, that, that attend the majority of the sessions. So uh, anyway, I'm going to move on to the next speaker, Umberto Cabrera, and the last one. Uh, so Umberto is a, a friend for a long time. Uh, we've known each other uh, since Umberto actually came to an ICDP college in optics um, and uh, impressed me very much. We worked together in Venezuela at IVIC and uh, uh, we did a number of uh, uh, workshops there. Uh, he's uh, been a regular and a senior associate at ICDP since uh, 2011 up until 2017. Um, and when he had to actually quit because he, was, he took on another, another uh, uh, program, mainly the Trill uh, that you heard about. Um, so he's been uh, he's been researching here also at the uh, Institute of Nuclear Physics, uh, Italian Institute for Nuclear Physics, um, and uh, uh, so he's uh, uh, he, he came. He, he's been working with them on a, on, a, on a one project sponsored by SPI, and I I think what you're going to hear uh, we really uh, are very grateful to to SPI for for initiating this project so many years ago on uh, having an anchor research program in optics. And the idea was to have a research uh, capability right here on the ICTB campus and really looking towards career development to help young researchers, uh, already early career researchers, people uh, who attain their PhD uh, and, and help them to in their careers uh, to, to publish, to learn new techniques, uh, and Umberto is going to tell you all about that because Umberto is really the, the person who's, who's, who's made this all happen. It, it looked wonderful on paper. Umberto made it happen in person, actually in practice. And that's not as easy as it sounds. All right. So I'm going to give it away to you, Umberto, and uh, go ahead. Thank you, you for the presentation. Uh, hi, everybody, wherever you are. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see the presentation? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. I will present the optics research uh, opportunity at the uh, ICTP, but I first will start uh, reading this uh, directly. This lecture outlines the opportunity for developing country scientists that began to take shape many years ago, uh, 2014. I am one of these from discussion with Johnny Amela during optics activities in Venezuela and many more back in Trieste. This was a starting point that uh, we met, and I proposed him uh, this topic. I proposed, and he kindly supported us uh, for the creation of this uh, new lab. I have to mention that we started in 2015, but briefly, it was a great effort before doing by many people. I mentioned only a few of them that are here. For example, uh, Milcho Danailov, uh, Anna Consortini, uh, Galeno Denardo, and many of them. But after that, the, this activity and this lab was moved to Electra, and we wanted to start supporting the uh, optics activity at the ICTP. Then, in 2015, these are the early, early picture of the first optics activity uh, in the, uh, the ICTP, uh, supported by the, uh, of course, the Winter College of Optics. We wanted to have hands-on activity, and this uh, lab was uh, first mainly supported by the SPIE, ICTP, and Core Research Program. All the, all this device that you can see there, the around. Uh, 12, uh, 15,000 euro was supplied by, by them. We are very grateful. I have to mention also that we have a great support from the uh, lab at Electra, from uh, Professor Micho Danailo, 
many devices that we have now, he uh, supply us and he's always very supportive. Now uh, about the research activity and projects. We are mainly, as I told before, I proposed this. I uh, wanted Joe to believe us at the beginning that thermal length spectrometry is a very good technique, is low cost and is highly sensitive. And I will demonstrate why and why we were successful. Uh, in thermal length spectroscopy, we have a thermal length microscopy, of course, and uh, as a detection method, we also uh, coupled thermal lengths with online detection for microfluidic system coupled to electrophoresis because thermal lengths is highly sensitive, but we don't have separation. We need separation and then detection. And also we implemented this. In second place, we have also been deflation spectroscopy for material characterization, mainly for thermo-optical characterization of sample, including thermal diffusivity, thermal conductivity, lifetime of a carrier in semiconductor, and so on and so forth. And there is another project that is at Electra in Milchot Lab, a laser lab, high precision laser spectroscopy that I, I am also involved for measurement of the hyperfine splitting in the ground state of the morning hydrogen, the so-called FAMU project. And uh, last uh, year, we started with digital holographic microscopy and thermal lens microscopy in collaboration with Ali Reza Moradi from Iran. Uh, also, we had a Trill student, Saret Kobi, that is here also in this, uh, in this presentation, for fluidic and a solid sample, also for biological samples, and also to have 3D imaging at the same time. Also, we have a collaboration with Arun Annan from Baroda University in India uh, about this project. We have a, a step student now with us here, and also Arun will come next month. As I promised you, I will mention why the technique is uh, good and what uh, there are advantages. It's a highly sensitive method along with a laser induced fluorescence are the best optical detection system for microfluidics. They can be coupled uh, very easily, both. Free scattering method is very important when you are an analyzing nanoparticles to, uh, to avoid uh, scattering. We can implement online detection. It's a non-destructive non uh, method. Uh, also we can detect single molecule. Finally, is cost efficient and compact, but also related to the uh, high sensitivity. As we have high sensitivity, we can use a low cost, low power laser that of course they are low, low cost and the system will be compact. Then if you have high sensit sensitivity, this is a, a very good issue. Briefly, the basic of phototermal spectroscopy. Phototermal uh, refers to the light matter interaction due to the uh, generation of heat following the absorption of photon, previous excitation. As you can see here, the, uh, uh, mainly a green laser, 532, depending on the absorption of the sample, excite the medium. Uh, we excite, uh, uh, modulate this laser, and with a probe beam, we create, we create first a, a thermo-optical element because of the, of the heat release. And then this thermoautical element is tested with a, a second beam that is called a probe beam. In liquids, as we will see after, the general principle of thermal length, we have first optical excitation, absorption, we can measure very, very low absorption of the order of 10 to minus five, 10 to minus seven. And we have no radiative relaxation. We can have also fluorescing, but always there is, a, there is a also a thermal energy relaxation. And there are temperature changes of the order of 10 to minus three, 10 to minus four Kelvin, that in liquid produce density change and produce where the intensity is higher, produce a, a higher, a lower a density. And through the tails where the intensity is lower, the intensity change. We have a refractive index of density, and this is a refractive index gradient also. And with this, a probe beam passing there suffer a, a intensity change that we can detect, and this intensity change are proportional to the absorbance of the sample, the concentration of the sample, and depend on the thermo-optical uh, factor of the, of, the, of the sample also. To give you 
é, 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 two é, main é, cara, major characteristics of the phototermal method: universality. Universality is because of the we always have a thermal energy relaxation. Again, example, and this energy relaxation change the refractive index of the medium, and this change can be detected in many ways by thermal length spectroscopy, photoacoustic spectroscopy, radiometry, and so on and so forth. But in addition to that, high sensitivity. And why high sens sens sensitivity? In any light matter interaction, there is always, as I mentioned before, a release of heat. The relaxation process, the relaxation process is very slow. It's very, the excitation is very fast, but the, relax the relaxation process is very uh, slow. It's remained in the medium for a long time. I give you an example. We have one microliter of water and we excite we say a resonance a wavelength we excite this atom the atom will absorb one photon and we release again the energy of this photon toward the surrounding water and heating the surrounding molecules in time of the order of 10 to minus 10 or 10 to minus 13 even less second however the thermal diffusion will remove the generate heat and this effect is very slow. It will take between tens of milliseconds to seconds to equilibrate the temperature. And during this time, the atom will accumulate the energy of 10 to 8, as you can see in the calculation to the uh, right side, of 10 to 8. Each single atom, photon, can rise the temperature 10 to minus 3 gradius. And we have many atoms in the system. This is the first uh, fact that tell us because, uh, why the, the method is very sensitive. The second one is because it's a phase method. It's a phase method like interferometry. We have a phase here that depends on the thermo-optical, the, the refractive index grading with the temperature, which is a constant, and this of the order of 10 to minus three, and the temperature change that is of the order of 10 to minus three. However, the wavelength that is in the denominator is 10 to minus 9. If you divide this, this large, but if large number, but if we multiply by the length of the sample, that is few cent, can be even one centimeter, this step is large. Then the phase change is very large. And this phase change is added because it's produced in the sample because of the thermal length effect to the incoming probing that pass there and get out with this phase change detected in the far field. But this phase change that is proportional to the refractive index and to the temperature variation is proportional to the absorption of the sample, linearly proportional to the absorption of the sample. And we can have a, 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 a thermal length signal. This is the, the signal because the, the signal without thermal length and with thermal length that is proportional to the thermo-optical factor of the sample and to the absorption and to the power of the excitation beam. Then we can measure absorbent, we can measure concentration, and we can measure also the uh, thermo-optical properties of the sample, like the thermal conductivity, as you can see, uh, can see here in this equation. OK, the next step was to go to miniaturization, because we have high sensitivity, but we don't have separation. We have all the molecules together there and we have a signal. We don't know which signal is coming from this molecule or from the other. We have to separate and see this molecule, but this signal, this peak. For this, in thermal length microscopy, we propose miniaturized gel electrophoresis for separation and thermal length for online detection. We apply electric field here and the particle move or the biomolecules depending on the size or depending on the on the uh, charge then we separate and when they pass here we have a signal that we know uh, is uh, belong to this molecule but also we can detect not only uh, which molecule you have you have there we can have the intensity that is proportional to the concentration to the right side there is our proposal here in the lab what we develop uh, with a, a trill student, Bernas Asbaji. And we have here the mini chip, and we have the excitation laser, 
collimated and then focus onto the sample here. Then the probe laser is coming here, collimated, pass through the sample and here arrive to the detector, connected to the Arduino board, and this gives a signal converted from analog to digital on the oscilloscope. Then when this voltage is applied to the sample, they move depending on the charge and the number of molecules or the size. And then we have a peak, we have a electroferogram that has a specific retention time and we analyze different uh, peaks. With this, we wanted to go first, mini miniaturization of the gel electrophoresis, or electrophoresis. Why? Because there are some advantages also. And we, the advantages are we use reduced sample volume. That is very important in analytical chemistry, in biochemistry and biosensing, because the samples are very expensive. This is a very important fact. This also allows us to do parallelization analysis. We can have, uh, together with thermal lens detection, we can have uh, laser-induced uh, uh, fluorescence, other kind of technique. The analysis time is shorter. It's short for a given resolution without compromising the resolution. Takes advantage of the increased spatial and temporal resolution of the thermal lens microscopy detection. We have high spatial resolution because we can concentrate the excitation beam in one micron, even less than one micron, depending on the uh, numerical uh, aperture of the objective. And finally, uh, uh, allow us to detect fluorescent as well as non-fluorescent sample with high sensitivity, as I mentioned before. Okay, I will start from the from the past year when the lab was created one of the first fellow that we have in the lab is uh, dr jehan Alba from uh, by hazara university in mancera he also was a, a winner uh, award d of the uh, ico uh, ictp galeno de nardo prize and he was uh, in our lab uh, doing research uh, in addition to the uh, publication that i will show a few of them at, at the final of the presentation uh, and the training uh, we propose a project uh, for the uh, Higher Education Committee of Pakistan that was accepted. And with this, uh, Dr. Jehan Albert replicated a, a phototherma lab. Also, he has a laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. He is now training many students there. And we are happy with this results. He also met the uh, PIE director when he uh, uh, was here and also with the, the president of the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. The second success story that I want to mention is Conlan uh, Gatayi Sotoso from the University of Lomé, Togo. He's uh, now in, the, in our presentation here. Conlan uh, is participating in the uh, Muone Hydrogen Spectroscopy project using mid infrared laser. He's also uh, working with cavity ring down spectroscopy here in our lab is, is uh, one of the research lines that we have here. Uh, but in addition to that, he was also working in phototermal spectroscopy. And we together uh, introduced a project in the uh, Third World Academy of Science to us. And the project was accepted for uh, 15,000. Uh, then he received a little more money and he built a very nice lab, a phototermal lab in, in Togo. Not only phototermal, he is able to do there also a speckle interferometry, microscopy, and many optical experiments. He, he has uh, many students now, PhD, uh, master, and uh, undergraduate uh, student. Thanks to, the, uh, to us and also to the SPIE support, because Conla was supported here mainly by the SPIE funds. And it's a, another a very uh, good uh, success story. I now will concentrate in the last year uh, fellows. Uh, you can see there, uh, we have eight. I think all of them are here now in this, uh, in this conference. Uh, eight during one year, very successful. I will, I will describe uh, some of them after. Uh, supported also by the training and research in Italian labs, Trill uh, program, and also with the, some of them with the support of the SPIE. With this, one of the uh, success and uh, collaboration opportunity that opened this uh, Trill Fellow is uh, the case of uh, Beinas Asbaji, 
that now is doing research under supervision of Dr. Loredana Casalis in Nano, Nano Innovation Lab at the Electra Synchrotron. Uh, we started together with the application of uh, mini chip gel electrophoresis with thermal line spectroscopy for biosensing based on nanoparticles. But the project was interested, and uh, Dr. Casalis invited Bainas for a trial fellow for uh, one year for now. And now we have very strong uh, collaboration because they have very interesting sample, and Bainas is collaborating there, also coming here. Uh, another student, Ahmed Al Sadi, from uh, also there, uh, Trieste University, and I am very happy also with this uh, collaboration. Another success story is the, uh, who is guiding also and uh, helping us here in this presentation, uh, Abdul, Abdul Rehman, that I like so much. He, is, uh, he was working with me here. Abdul uh, proposed, Abdul proposed a model together with Sigmarana using Laguero Gaussian beam as a pump source for more sensitive thermal lane detection. However, as they don't have a experimental facility there, uh, he was here and successfully we uh, did the experiment. We published one paper in Yosabi. Now it's a second paper on, on, the, on the review, but more deeply, I want to say that uh, uh, Abdul uh, developed the experimental part of the thesis here, and he's going to defend uh, very, very soon. This is a very interesting uh, story. He was together with, here with Alexi Jaramillo Osorio from the University of Antioquia, a student of uh, John Freddy, also working in, in pre encryption. As you know, Freddy uh, showed there that we combine thermal lengths uh, with uh, encryption and we have very, very good result. This is a part of uh, Alexi's uh, thesis in Colombia. And I am happy that uh, he uh, was also here with us. Uh, now, uh, I was mentioning that uh, the lab uh, is, uh, was mainly, mainly supported by the uh, funds of the SPIE, but the ICTP uh, provided the, 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 the programs that these uh, fellows uh, can uh, come to, the, to, the, to, to here to do, to do research. One was the TRIL program. The second one is the STEP program that in the past was used uh, by this uh, state fellow and former diploma student, uh, Fatou Doye de, de Senegal, was working in, in, in past year with the uh, uh, study mechanical properties of cancer cells using optical twists uh, in Eon lab with uh, Dr. Uh, Dan Coyo. But now we have one uh, step uh, student here is, is in, the, in the conference, Subat Utadilla from Baroda University in, in, in India, uh, we have working in the, in the uh, ICTP Optics Lab, uh, two advisors, uh, me and Arun Anand, uh, uh, who will uh, uh, arrive uh, next, uh, next week. Uh, thanks also to the, to the TRIL program. And uh, we are uh, trying to integrate digital holography with a phototermal excitation for studying cancer, cancer cell using morphological imaging and also imaging because of thermal lens excitation. I want to summarize uh, the, the main results that we had so far. Uh, I, as I mentioned before, we, uh, because of the, of the fellow, the visitor, we, uh, we had new collaboration. Uh, we have collaboration with INFN Trieste, INFN Frascati, the University of Nova Gorica in Slovenia, and the National Institute for Research and the Development of, of Isotope in, in, in Cluj Napoca, uh, where uh, Nicoleta Tosa and Kalin uh, present in this conference are working, and uh, with uh, Loredana Casalis at the lecture, the Nano Innovation Lab. We have very strong collaboration now. Uh, I have to mention also the advising thesis. Uh, Abdul Rehman to, uh, together with uh, Imrana and Alexis Jaramillo from Colombia together with, with Freddy or John Freddy and uh, the impact of the research in developing countries. Uh, as a result of this training, I have to mention that uh, the two cases that I wanted to uh, finally emphasize, Jehan Akbar, that was associated with Trill and also a prize winner of this uh, prize, and Conlan Gatayiso Toso, from uh, Togo, 
they replicate new labs because of the training here. And also they have uh, many publications with us. Uh, but uh, finally, I want to mention about future plans. For the future plan, we want to introduce new projects based on optical method for microfluidic system for nano biosensor and imaging system. We are doing already, we are doing to establish new laboratories and collaboration in developing countries, mainly in, in Africa, advising PhD thesis in developing countries, using state program and other programs, training act activities, of course, will continue in that direction with street program to continue with collaboration with INFN, Electra, Nova Gorica University, and the uh, Center for Isotope in uh, Cluj-Napoca, Romania. And finally, to apply for the international projects to improve the facility of the lab and the, to support uh, visitors. I want to, uh, because uh, all this collaboration, all this training, all this new lab also is, uh, is uh, complemented with publication I will mention only last year, last year, 2021, we have a publication with all the fellows that were visiting the lab, as you can see there, the name. Uh, as you can see there, with Loredana Casale about Electrophoretti, uh, Abdul Rahman with, uh, uh, in the previous slide, John Alexis Jaramillo, we have also uh, with a collaboration with Egypt, with Neama Iman, that is here in the 11, uh, paper number 11. Uh, we, also, we also have some collaboration with Ali Reza, Sara from Iran, and with uh, Suwat and uh, Arun Annan uh, in, the, in the world that we already started. I uh, really thank you for your attention, and if you have questions, I am ready to answer you. Thanks very much, Umberto. Uh, really a great, uh, great presentation. Uh, really highlights uh, the kind of uh, tension to careers that, that, that we were talking about earlier. So it's uh, really wonderful. And uh, thanks a lot for coming to ICDP and doing this. Um, so we do have a question. Well, Abdu, you have a question, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, first, uh, I have a question. Uh, okay, uh, Umberto, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, since uh, I have worked with you and I know you are a uh, very good researcher. Uh, so I have a question regarding this presentation uh, about thermal lens spectroscopy. Since we know uh, this spectroscopy is very sensitive, uh, this method of thermal lens spectroscopy is very sensitive. I was wondering that if we can use this specific method uh, to uh, detect or, or in some detection processes like uh, uh, the uh, uh, thermal wave, uh, like some detection of uh, gravitational waves, uh, since uh, we need a very sensitive method to detect gravitational waves. So I was wondering, uh, maybe we can use this thermal and spectroscopy to detect uh, this, uh, these type of waves. I cannot say yes or not, but I can say you that the thermal lens is uh, so sensitive as the interferometric that was used for detection of a, a gravitational wave. Uh, it was demonstrated, and you, uh, you saw there uh, why it was so sensitive, because of, it's a phase method. And uh, I didn't have this idea, but it really is it's a idea that we have to, to think, because as a theory, Yes, I can tell you it's possible, but I cannot uh, confirm. Yes, uh, less we do. Okay, thank you so much, Umberto. Thank you. Uh, okay, Joe, uh, it's your okay. turn now. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, that, that would be wonderful if, if that happened. Um, so I'm looking at the chat. Let, let me see. Um, yes, yeah, so Mudras uh, Arshid, um, Abdul, do you know? Can you unmute? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I have unmuted Anna uh, Constantini and uh, Amanehi Mikhail, if I am uh, saying their uh, names right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would like to congratulate the speakers. Uh, I already did this with the, in Rana, and now I want to congratulate Freddy and Umberto. Thank you very much. And also the organizers. Joe, this uh, is a very important uh, session. Thank you, Thank you to you all. Thank you, Anna.
Thanks, Anna. Amane. Hello, hello. Thank you very much for interesting presentation. I also had a question about uh, kinds of samples. In the case of uh, transparent samples and solid state samples, I want to ask, uh, uh, how is the exactly process? Is the same as uh, happens in the fluids? For example, if we use transparent solid or metal, uh, can we uh, investigate and measure these uh, properties using this thermal lens method? Thank you for your question, uh, interesting question. Yes, I mentioned that we mainly were working with a liquid, but there are some uh, work we did in the past with a solid sample, transparent sample, and we have very good results. If the sample is transparent, uh, we can go ahead because uh, the most important thing is the, the probing to pass through the sample. And of course, the refractive index will change in different way because in solid sample depend on the on the polarizability of the sample, but also there is a very good thermal length in, and we can measure uh, uh, also the, the property. If the sample are opaque, of course, we cannot, we have to go to uh, uh, be deflation spectroscopy that uh, I mentioned before, uh, and also a phototermal mirror is another technique, uh, it's uh, in the family of, of thermal length, but also can be used. But the model used is different. It's different model. It's not the model I use, but also it, it, it can be. Did we just miss? Okay, so Umberto, you still there? I think maybe Umberto just dropped out. <laughs> the internet. Umberto, we can't hear you. Ah, what happened? I, I, I think I think the internet connection dropped. There's a, a green uh, green arrow next to his name. Well, wow. at any oh. rate, let. Sorry. Uh, I'm muted you again. again I'm muted Umberto. yourself. Unmuted yourself. Oh yeah, Umberto. Yeah, you are muted. Okay, finally. Ah, you did. Uh. uh Oops. The, the hot mute me, the hot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, Umberto. <laughs> okay, can you hear, can yeah. you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> Good now. Abdul is too quick. Did you hear me when I answered to yes, I, a minute? Do you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we did, we did. We did. Uh, right at the end, you just dropped that. Yeah. Okay, it's possible, okay. it's possible to measure solid sample, yes. It's, yeah. it's possible, totally, it's transparent is possible, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I, uh, do we have any other, uh, I don't see any other hands. Uh, there is another hand, uh, Santiago. Uh, oh yeah, Santiago, okay, right. Santiago. Okay, Santiago, uh, you can unmute, please. Yes, yeah. now I can, thank you. Yes. Uh, I, I wonder what, what is the relation between these uh, phototermal spectroscopy and, and the photoacoustic spectroscopy? I suppose it's quite related phenomena. Are, are they yes. comparable in terms of sensitivity and so on? Yes, they are in the same family because both of them depend on the release of heat, the excitation. The only difference is in the detection system that in the photoacoustic we detect with a microphone in thermal lengths, we detect the phase variation. But I have to say that thermal lengths is more sensitive because we detect phase change. In photoacoustic, is uh, less sensitive and is less used, but it's also a, a, a very sensitive technique. Yeah, let's see, thank you. Um, and if I may, to, to John, if I, Freddy, if I think it's still here. Um, he, he mentioned this combination of encrypted in, in, uh, classic encryptation and, and uh, QR coding. And he said that QR coding is much more uh, um, uh, tolerant to noise. And, and if, if it was possible to comment what is the key uh, aspect that makes it so tolerant to noise.
Is for John Freddy the question or for me? Yes, to, to Freddy. Yes. Ah, Freddy. Uh, Amberdo, you are muted again. He's muted. Fred is muted. Uh, Amber okay, okay. Uh, let Okay, uh, I think Freddy can unmute himself now. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, uh, who was asking the question? Santiago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I he's muted so. now. Santiago. Yeah. Uh, Santiago, you can unmute. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. My question was uh, if it was possible to briefly explain why QR coding was so tolerant to noise, to the difference than uh, plastic encryption. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the main fact is when you have a uh, an object encrypted without <clears throat> with encryption techniques, you have the recorded objects with noise. This noise is produced by the random face mask. Yes. Now, if you have a QR code, the QR code are, 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 are built to be resistant to noise. It, what is to say? You lost part of the QR code, it's still you can read it. Or you put the QR code uh, behind a glass, you can read it. They are, they, they are uh, built to be resistant to noise. For example, we create new new codes, customized codes, different to the QR codes that are that are less sensitive to the noise. You can create the codes, the, the codes, and also you have to. It's very important that there is a, a tolerance, there, there is a limit. If you have a, a lot of information in a QR code or a customized code, maybe you cannot read it. It depends on the information that you are putting into the QR code. It's not the same to put on a single letter to a long message. According to the more information you put in the code, the code is more structured and the limit to the tolerance to noise change. But they are built for that. You can build your own code, what we do in some papers. Thank you. You're welcome. There is some Peter who has raised hand. Uh, okay, uh, let me. Okay. Okay, Peter, you can unmute, please. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Huberto Cabrera for a wonderful presentation. Uh, I have a simple question to ask uh, Professor Humberto. Please, uh, does viscosity affect viscosity of fluids? Does it affect uh, the thermal lens spectroscopy? Does it the viscosity of the fluids affect uh, measurements and and all those things come with it? You're okay. muted in there, though. Okay. Umberto, you're muted. Okay, Umberto, you can unmute. Okay, now, yes, thank you. No, the, the viscosity of, of the fluid is not. The viscosity is the transparent. Uh, the viscosity, of course, change the, the refractive index and change the, the thermo-optical properties, as I show there, the, the entity, and even can increase the sensitivity because the sensitivity depends on the thermo-optical factor. But if the medium is transparent, uh, you can have thermal length. Of course, the, the, the fluid should be static. We cannot measure thermal length in uh, mobile. Okay, we can measure, but there is another model. We have to consider this at uh, constant velocity. But the viscosity can help, even can help. Uh, okay. Okay, so so um, what happens to a fluid that 
changes, if viscosity changes intermittently. You will have, you will have a, a change in thermal length signal, and it's a very complex system. You have to, to, to analyze lying online system that we develop a different signal and associate with different velocity and maybe with different uh, viscosity of the fluid. You can even determine the viscosity or associate the viscosity to the thermal line signal because it's different. The signal should be different. And there are people who are even working on this topic. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. OK, uh, uh, thank you so much, Amberto. I think uh, this was the last question. So yeah. over to you, Joe, please. OK, thanks. Yeah, if anybody comes up with more questions, of course, uh, Amberto, We'll be here tomorrow. Maybe if you join early, you can catch him or send him an email. But I want to thank all the speakers, Imrana, John Freddy, and Umberto, for wonderful talks on this International Day of Light. I think it was a very special session. And I'm really thankful that you agreed to participate in this and give us your, um, your views and your best practices. Uh, so uh, tomorrow, we'll begin the LIDAR lectures, so beginning with Joe Shaw. Uh, Joe Shaw's, uh, is, so I'll say tomorrow, is uh, on the board of directors of SPIE, the International Society for Optics and Photonics. He's uh, considered a world-renowned uh, uh, expert on, on LIDAR itself, on the applications. He also has a, a strong interest in the private sector. So, you know, you can ask him also. Uh, Joe, your internet is not working properly. Yeah, I think there is.